Good morning, everybody. This is Rama on Writing uh, with our Saturday webinar on author branding. This is a topic that I've spoken about uh, on a numerous occasions, and I think that uh, each time I speak about it, I learn more and understand more about it. And I think that uh, all of us have an author brand, whether we know it or not. And I think that that's the key, is that in most cases, we have this brand staring at us. It's like the nose on our face, and we do not see it. And that's how the topic came to mind this week. I was working uh, with uh, one of our authors who's, uh, you know, finished his first draft, and we have it uh, finally sent to the style editor. And so I, you know, in that process, I've gotten to know him, know him pretty well, and we started talking a little bit about some of the components of the next step, which was, you know, looking at the website. And he started to tell me about some things that were kind of unrelated to his writing, and it just clicked in my head that he was talking about the components of his branding, okay, who he is already. And the odd thing is, this guy is, this guy is you know, hugely smart. And I think all of us are, but we can't see. You know, it's like uh, the forest for the trees kind of situation. You know, we're just so, you know, you know, into the riding component that we don't see what our resources are, what we bring to the table. And so he was talking about his artwork, and it was uh, uh, a Zen circle that he uh, he had painted. And uh, he sells a ton of this. He says, yeah, I sell a lot of different artwork, but this Zen circle thing sells like 100 times more than anything else. And so we're talking, well, gosh, you know, I think that your main page for your website should be called the Zen circle. And your blog should be called your Zen circle. And the company publishing company should be called the Zen Circle. And, you know, you can hear the gears going in his head as I'm talking. He's like, oh, my God. And so, you know, um, the interesting component, and this is kind of interesting, uh, um, you know, so we started to do a little bit of, uh, of uh, domain searching. And for those of you who haven't registered every cool name of anything you've wanted to uh, think about, write about, uh, utilize, uh, you know, uh, for 10 or 12 bucks a year, do yourself a favor and register those domain names. Critical. Uh, the Zen Circle was an auction website, okay? Uh, ZenCircle.com. And uh, he says, well, look, I can buy it for $300. And, you know, $300 is a lot of money, but it's not an extraordinary amount of money. And so, uh, you know, uh, he was kind of going back and forth a little bit, and then it dawned on him that, well, if he purchases uh, that domain name, uh, he's going to incentivize his desire to make the return on the investment, okay? And I think that, uh, you know, that was the key component for him was that, oh, my gosh, you know, uh, uh, I can afford that. Uh, I'm going to pick it up. Now, we checked uh, zencircle.net, and uh, that one was $1,800. Usually the .com is the expensive one. So, you know, the lesson learned here, gang, is look at who you are and who you've been and what you do and what you want to do and register those domains. Uh, even if you do not know how you're going to use them or when you're going to use them, for 10 or 12 bucks a year, you cannot go wrong. And uh, if you decide after a couple of years not to, to, not to use it, you know what, you've uh, you know, wasted a pound of Kona coffee. Okay, I would never waste a pound of Kona coffee, but you know, 25 bucks or so for a couple of years is certainly worth putting in your... Uh, you know, in your tank, so to speak, uh, having as a, uh, a resource. Um, so, you know, that is the beginning of the component of branding. 
okay? You know, what names are you going to register? What names are you going to call yourself? Uh, what are the names of your book? What are the names of your website? How are you going to post to social media? What is your identity, online identity, going to be? And I talk about online identity because most of us are authors and we never leave our desks. So, uh, you know, we might as well take advantage of that component. Um, not to say that we shouldn't uh, think about, uh, you know, that identity in different groups uh, uh, in real life because it's easy stuff. Uh, business card, bookmarks. You know, all of these components, coffee cups, you know, however we're going to pursue our name recognition, that is a component of author branding. Okay, so I was reading this morning, you know, how do you develop an author brand? How do you get found? Um, you know, what's the, uh, you know, the step-by-step? -step? Of course, there's never a, an easy step-by-step -step for anything. But one of the components that they mention is that, uh, you know, before you start really being able to market, advertise your, your brand, you need to kind of create an awareness of it, okay? So that may include talking to people. Going to meetings, going to parties, joining associations and explaining, you know, who you are uh, by giving out a business card or something like that. Um, so you have to, you have to get the name out there. And one of the, uh, one of the things that they said is that you need to have this identity pop up in all different places before it's going to do anything. Okay, so let's take a step back for a second and let's see how we can brand our books. So uh, many of us are going to be writing uh, multiple books and I think, uh, you know, Leland, we already branded your books uh, in that first go round. All the covers of his five uh, uh, children's books essentially look the same. That is a component of branding, okay? Using the same look. And I know that, uh, you know, we have several authors. Let me look at my list here real quick. Um, I thought I saw Dennis up, but uh, I don't, oh, yep, Dennis is here. Uh, Dennis, uh, you know, has a, is a classic story. Dennis has written, uh, uh, I know we published two, and I think he has two more books in a series called The Time Stand Still Chronicles. And we had one formatter do book one, and then we had a different formatter do book two. And somewhere in that process, uh, Dennis says, I want my second book to look like the first book. And uh, so we had to kind of do a little bit of rearranging and, uh, you know, uh, on the interior to get that to occur. But that was a component of author branding. Okay, uh, he puts a clock type structure on the cover of those books. That's a component of author branding. Um, sometimes using a, uh, a special font. Now, for example, uh, Tom uh, Carroll used a pretty cool font in his first book, and especially on the cover. And it's not that I'm toting my own uh, uh, cover creation with Tom. The, the identity of using that font can extend to book two so that there is a common theme about this. The way this was described in some of what I read this morning was that if you go and you want a Nora Roberts uh, uh, romance novel, one of the things that you don't see is write-ups on the back cover, okay? So once you've reached that, uh, that uh, peak of author brand recognition, you no longer necessarily have to have a, about the author and about the book. What she has is a picture of herself on the back cover. So, you know, I'm, uh, I'm thinking that 
Well, maybe on book two, I'll just put a picture of myself on the back cover and see uh, whether it makes any difference or not, okay? So as your name gets out there, you, you know, you kind of gain in stature and you, you can capitalize on that in a different way. We're all babies and we're beginners in this process. Uh, um, so we do need to, uh, you know, create that name recognition, but I think it also helps us to look at the people that are already arrived and look at what they've done and think, well, hmm, does it make sense? How, how did they do that? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about genre and author branding, okay? I think it's a common uh, misconception that every book, you know, if we're going to develop an author brand, every book has to be the same genre um, or the same topic. And that's not going to work because how many times can you write about mountain biking? Okay, I've written one, uh, I'll probably write two and maybe a third one, but at that point, you know, I'm going to be done with mountain biking. Uh, uh, but what I've noticed with myself is that I have a certain style of writing. It's kind of a tongue-in-cheek, uh, somewhat satirical voice. And both of uh, the books that I've, uh, the one I've created and the one I'm working on has that component. So regardless of what I was trying to do, my personality is shown through my writing. And that is a branding component. So I think that uh, we all uh, have that uh, way of doing this, okay? And we may be doing it already and not even knowing it. So the first step in, you know, identifying your branding, I think, is to step back and take a look at who you are. And then, of course, you know, uh, since we're authors, uh, we can write fiction, so we can uh, we can write our own fiction. We can, you know, create an online identity that may be different than who we see ourselves as. Maybe we can do uh, the author branding as who we want to uh, portray, as opposed to who we think we are. Okay, so there are uh, you know some components that way that are possible. Uh, we are the writers of this uh, story, so to speak. So we can definitely uh, move forward and take care of that. Uh. Okay, uh, so now we're looking to identify our brand. We're going to um, perhaps take a look at some domain names. We want to have our website identify that brand okay now i chose a blog name called the renegade mountain biker okay i was developing a mountain bike identi identity uh, mountain bike branding how am i going to do that for my book on hawaii you know and this is a uh, this is something that I've been thinking about. It's like, hmm, what do I do? The renegade mountain biker uh, may not, uh, you know, fit for that component. You know, a blog can certainly cover different topics, but is it appropriate or is it not? I haven't gotten the answer to that one yet. But what I'm doing is I'm starting to think of, well, what would be a cool name for a blog about Hawaii? Because... You know, if I'm here in Hawaii, uh, you know, two months at a time and I'm a continual blogger, it's easier for me to blog about my adventures in Hawaii while I'm here than when I'm in Sedona and I'm kind of the mountain bike person. Now, another component, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time with the authors, you know, promoting books, publishing books, you know, I am a publishing consultant, so to speak. So now I have three different branding components that are going to make up uh, who I am. And, uh, you know, so we kind of need to look at all the different uh, uh, aspects 
of where we want to go. And this wasn't something that was identified in what I read about this morning. I think that we're all multidimensional and that uh, we can attract a different uh, segment of our audience through these different identities. Okay, now I'm not, uh, I'm not telling you to go uh, uh, schizophrenia on this and uh, you know, uh, you know, take it to heart that way, uh, but I am, you know, kind of identifying that, well, heck, you know, we can define different components of what we want to write about, who we want to be. Now, all of this leads up to uh, what is called the author platform. And many of you out there, I see your beautiful faces, uh, uh, many of you are writing a book so that you can uh, teach a component of something that interests you, okay? So your teaching and your brand are, you know, hugely connected. And if that's the direction that you're going to go, uh, definitely develop that brand identity. You know, start looking at those catchy names. Start to, you know, a brand is more than a logo or a catchy phrase, but it includes a logo and a catchy phrase. An identifiable logo uh, could go a long ways. And, um, you know, we probably all have a, you know, an image that we like, or if we haven't developed that yet, it may be a good thing to, to do so. Uh, one of the uh, components of our publishing program is for the authors to uh, decide whether they want to set up a business name, an LLC. Uh, and that name can contain a identifiable logo as well. And then the reason why we would look for a catchy phrase is so that when people, when we talk to people, we can say something cute and catchy and memorable. I think the key word is memorable here because they're not going to remember all the gobbledygook that comes out of our mouth when we just talk off the top of our head. They're going to remember one key phrase or something along those lines. And so uh, to develop something like that in our arsenal of tools is going to be really helpful at, you know, getting that name recognition out there. And bear in mind, I think they, uh, uh, the studies have shown that it takes someone a minimum of three times of hearing something before it gets through their gray matter and into their memory. So if we were to, you know, utilize that catchy, uh, identifiable phrase in a lot of different places, uh, uh, hashtag the oracle, you know, hashtag the enlightened trader, uh, you know, uh, those kind of things, uh, you know, will stick in people's mind uh, over time, okay? Of course, being consistent uh, with our, you know, our logos, our catchy phrases is uh, really helpful. And so uh, one of the things that I want all of you to do, if you're willing, is email me some of your catchy phrases, Email me some of your identifying names that you want to uh, pursue, and let's get those out on the table now. Okay, you all have my email, rama at tombird.com. Uh, let's, uh, let's go for it. And, you know, as you identify those things, go look uh, for the domain names. If you're in our program, Greg can search for you, or simpler, you can go to godaddy.com and they have a domain search right there. Very simple. If you don't like uh, GoDaddy, there's uh, Network Solutions. They also have domain name searches. So take a look at those components. And 
If it's already taken, it may require that you tweak it a little bit, change the words around, add a word, uh, you know, uh, play on word. You know, uh, all there are all kinds of options open. Uh, we are uh, kind of at the uh, the uh, low uh, low um, low on the totem pole at this point. So a lot of the more obvious branding names and names of websites and things like that could already be taken. Uh, so we have to provide our you know our our creativity in order for us to you know really get to those uh, components that we're after okay so um branding is an important key to uh you know to have filtered through everything that we do so if we have a identifiable look to our website we would want to make sure that that same, you know, color combination or layout would extend to our newsletter, might extend to our business card, our bookmark. Uh, you know, uh, there are ways of creating a consistent identity that uh, goes a long way. So when people see, you know, for example, Tom likes using that uh, purple uh, color on pretty much everything that he does. Tom Bird uh, likes to do that. So in the past, we've had the website, the newsletter, uh, many of, uh, we had purple t-shirts for our time. Uh, we have a, a purple on the little uh, messenger bags that we've uh, given out. So we have, created uh, the Tom Bird purple uh, kind of thing. Of course, you know, when he said, well, Rama, you got to wear a purple shirt, I say, no, that's not going to happen. How about blue? Uh, so, you know, you run into a little resistance from your, uh, you know, some people on those kind of things. But point being consistency. One of the things that... Uh, you know, Tom Bird and I have tried, you know, for a while we, uh, we utilize something called the Author University as one of our branding uh, components. And over time, you know, it didn't seem to pan out as well as we had anticipated. It's still up there, but I think it's kind of dropped by the wayside. Um, Tom Bird method, you know, that one sticks out. And in the case of Tom Bird, um, you know, uh, I had to push real strongly for Tom to want to use his name in everything, even though he he was readily aware that you know his name is the name recognition component. He was you know not as hot on you know putting that out front initially and so we've kind of changed that so our name may be a key component in this process and so uh, it goes on to the point where we have to stop being shy about who we are and i think that that's uh, something that many of us are uh, are you know uh, kind of in uh, conflict with because we think well who are we you know, why, uh, you know, you know, what do I have to bring to the table? Well, if you don't start uh, identifying what it is that you are bringing to the table and own it, then uh, you'll never get there, okay? Um, this whole process of publishing and promotion uh, of our books uh, starts by doing something. It wasn't uh, that long ago. I think it was in our last... Uh, last uh, webinar and I wrote this down because I thought that this was really important. What is the one thing that we're going to do today for our book? Okay. And, uh, you know, even though that's off topic from branding, I think it's really important for us all to, you know, think about that one thing that we're going to do, whether it's, uh, you know, uh, maybe we should apply it to branding, okay? 
what is the one thing that we're going to do today to help with our brand recognition? Okay. Uh, that involves maybe setting up a, uh, a social media account with a name, uh, the enlightened trader. You know, uh, maybe that's a branding uh, component that we can do. Point being that if we don't get started doing these one things, then we're going to get nowhere fast. Okay, well, I've kind of talked about branding uh, until I'm blue in the face here, although uh, you can't tell because it's still dark here in Hawaii. Um, so uh, I'm going to open up this forum for a couple of things, okay? Uh, any question about branding, uh, 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 your own personal brand, if you have some ideas and you want to uh, talk about them or need to, uh, need uh, us to comment about it hey this is a safe place to uh, to work out some of those details now the other thing that i'd really like to i'd like to talk about is topics for the coming webinars you know i uh, i would like to have a list of things that you all want want to learn about and uh of course, you know, I might uh, ask you to learn something about it prior to uh, the webinar so you have some good tips to, uh, to add to the webinar. Um, one of my goals, and I think I posted this in one of the emails that went out, is to get more participation uh, from this group. I, I would truly love to have uh, some of you do presentations. And of course, uh, you know, I haven't really had an author interview, I think since uh, uh, Tom Pitts did his wonderful interview. And uh, Tom, I still have people that I speak to say, you know, uh, were moved by your, uh, by your author interview. So any author out there that wants to do an interview, uh, you know, uh, let's uh, get you on the schedule. I have a couple on the schedule for the next coming months, but uh, there are authors out there that have books that are finished that need to uh, uh, have their author interview. Let me see. We have uh, Deborah Lightheart who will be uh, featured in, uh, I think, uh, in a month and a half or so. Catherine Carrigan's going to come back and talk. Uh, you know, I don't recognize everyone's uh, number. Uh, Leland, uh, we can pop you into the hot seat one of these days, and uh, you can talk. Um, anyone that's done one and wants to do another one, hey, why not? Uh, I think uh, Christina Vondel's on, online or was, uh, so we want to get her, uh, her back into uh, uh, doing an interview. And I do have a list of a lot of authors that have seemed to have shied away from wanting to talk about their books. But I can't tell you how important it is for us to feel comfortable talking in front of people about our books. This is a huge accomplishment, gang. And we kind of, uh, you know, many times uh, don't look at it that way. It is you. It is huge. And then uh, many of you are, are thinking about uh, a platform, thinking about teaching a component. Uh, you know, this is the place to start. Let's get it out in the open. Let's get good at this so that when we go in front of people that don't know who we are, uh, we've already kind of uh, gotten through that scared feeling and, uh, you know, we're old hands at it. I remember the first webinar I had to do. Uh, you know, Tom, uh, Tom told me one day, Rama, you're going to be doing webinars now. And it's like, oh, okay. And, uh, you know, it was a scary uh, thought at first. But now, three years later, you know, it's very commonplace for me to do a webinar. And I love doing them. You know, I can talk about anything now. I, uh, you know, I uh, can make up anything. I've always been good on my feet. And so this is an opportunity to get comfortable talking to people. So even if you don't have a book, 
done yet and you want to get comfortable talking about where you're going with the book or you have questions about your book, you know, this group, some of these, uh, these authors here uh, are very accomplished and they have insights and they've gone through, we've all gone through some of these harder components. So getting a little insight, a little encouragement from uh, the old uh, hands here can go a long way. Okay, uh, does anyone have any comment for today about author branding uh, or anything like that? I do. Okay, <laughs> Ashira, welcome. Hi. Um, I don't know if this is exactly branding, but I, I think it is. Uh, about Twitter. Um, <laughs> So I have this thing, it's, it's uh, for musicians, it's called Reverb Nation. I have an account on this website called Reverb Nation where you can, you know, put up your music or whatever kinds of recordings and photos and things like that. So I was updating that a few days ago and I got a whole bunch of followers because I for totally forgot that it was connected with Twitter. So I was tweeting without even realizing that I was doing it. And the, the, all the followers who I got were people, mostly rap artists, who, um, you know, are had a lot of really misogynist, disgusting pictures, you know, people I don't want following me and I don't want associated with me. And it's a lot of work to just um, delete people or <laughs> block them and stuff, you know. And, um, and then, of course, you have less followers. But I'm not getting the kind of followers that I want. I don't think they're doing anything for me. They're just using me to get more followers themselves. They have no interest in what I'm doing. And so it's definitely not giving me the branding or identity that I want at all. And I wonder <clears throat> if you have any ideas about how to deal, or if anyone has any ideas about how to deal with that. Other than I can obviously disconnect my reverb nation from my Twitter, but it happens no matter what I do, it seems like. You know, there, there's actually two, two main uh, things that I, I hear from you, Ashira. Uh, one is something that I think is really uh, important. I, actually, I think they're both really important, okay? First thing is that there are websites out there that uh, we may be working with that are attached to our social media, whether we like it or not. Uh, that could be a good thing, okay? Uh, if we're looking to get our name out there, okay? Now, the downside is, uh, is what uh, Ashira has, uh, has identified is that there are a lot of people out in the social media world that we may not really want to connect with. So uh, just because somebody says, friend me, um, you know, uh, that is not a blind thing that we want to necessarily do. When someone has a friend request for me, I go to their page on Facebook and I look and see who they are to see if, uh, you know, uh, we have anything in common or really to make sure they're not like a spammer uh, uh, kind of person. So, uh, you know, um, I don't know how you necessarily, uh, you know, kind of sort through all of these components, Ashira, uh, but I think you identified something really critical that uh, just collecting friends to have numbers isn't isn't necessarily going to get us anywhere and uh getting followers uh you know um so we do want to kind of look and see what it is and i think that some of uh some of this is relating to identifying you know our brand and our audience okay uh you know, if you kind of uh, look a little tighter on, on on what your audience is and who you want to impact, that may help sort things out a little bit for you as far as who who you you collect. Okay, uh, um, it's sort of, it's like setting the intention a little bit, and so I think that a lot of times uh, we don't have a clear intention with our social media. Uh, and so we do collect things. I, I think it happens in life, actually. You know, I'm not sure if it's social media. I think that this is a real classic lesson that if we don't set the right intention, then we get something uh, that uh, we aren't uh, really, something we don't really want. 
So, uh, you know, interesting. Does, uh, does anyone else have any, uh, you know, comments? Has anyone else encountered, uh, you know, people uh, on social media that uh, they feel aren't the type of people that they, uh, that they want to co connect with? Is this a, a common thing for people? I have, yeah. yeah. Hasn't been hasn't been a lot, but I had a similar experience, and then just started checking who was following me, and uh, and, and when it's like on Twitter, it suggests to follow these people. I don't. I stopped clicking follow, 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 follow. It was a little painstaking, but look at their look at their follow them. And then sometimes, uh, mostly I got promotional follows, you know, people following me that had something to sell, but not too irritating. But uh, that, that was all. I just had to look at the profile of who, either Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever. Look at their profile before you follow them. Sometimes the way around that is if you follow uh, an organization, and they have followers. You can pretty be pretty pretty sure that those, their followers are okay. But it's just that work. You have to look at every. It's, it's a lot of detail. And uh, I have a, another comment on branding. If we want to move on. Yep. Go for it, Tom. Okay. Uh, I just when you thought about when you were talking about the. The little bit of uh, multiple personalities we all have and different images. And I thought uh, for you, uh, Rama, is, you know, you're, you had Renegade is in all your, your Renegade rider, Renegade mountain biker, Renegade beachcomber. But I felt the commonality of all those things. It was the Renegade uh, in a uh, Pied Piper Renegade type thing. So even though you had a lot of different, like your, your books are all on different subjects, but it's like a travel, uh, someone who writes travel books, they're, they have their style, they're always writing about a different place, but it's, so you, you, I mean, you even though you're spread out, you do have a, uh, a common, common theme. And that's what I've been struggling with, that author brand, and trying to find a blog that I, uh, I liked some 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 blog that uh, raised some passion in me. It was getting hard to find, but as I worked on that and I found uh, a good organization, it narrowed down my my uh, my author platform, my identity. And it's uh, there's an educator, a uh, doctor of. Uh, Psychology, I think, or social sciences, anyway, they're making a War Comes Home webinar and they're raising awareness of uh, what it's like to come home from war. And, it took, and it, I, I was just like getting desperate, looking everywhere and signing up for a lot, <laughs> signing up with groups that I may have to, and I signed up with about 10 and dropped out of eight, but I found one. Uh, war comes home and that webinar next Tuesday so anyway that that it all it all hangs together that search for cross blogs where are we going to cross blog and and what's really interesting and what grabs us and our author identity our, our branding our platform it all starts to come together as I move I put up my poster board. Everybody's putting up poster boards as well. As I as I move towards the center of that, it all starts to gel for me, and I just gave up. I'm not going to come up with a author platform this morning. I'm just not. It's going to evolve, and I just have to be comfortable with that. And somewhere down the road, I might. I want to talk about the significance. Maybe I'll research this myself. How much significance does that URL have? Is, is can we change it midstream here six months after promotion? And and I guess 
if anybody has any experience for future topics on YouTube or making book trailers, which are our videos of, for a book, they're kind of cool. So YouTube, how do we how do we use YouTube and book trailers? I'll probably have to do that interview, right? <laughs> Well, you know, uh, you know that's a that's a great topic, uh, uh, Tom, and I will certainly address that one. Uh, oddly enough, uh, this week, uh, Sally Rose, who's uh, you know one of our authors, uh, I helped her do a um, a uh, service dog book, uh, you know, that we just put up on Amazon, and it did uh, it did hit its bestseller on the first day that she went live with it course after that it dropped out of the uh, top 10 but she did a little trailer right on her computer for that book you know a minute minute and a half something like that and uh, put that on YouTube so that is a great topic I will certainly address that and I, I really wanted to uh, comment about uh, what you said Tom because I think that this is critical for all of us uh, you know uh, Tom is out there trying stuff, okay? He's trying to find a group to cross blog with. And as he said, you know, he comes, uh, you know, sometimes he hits a nail on the head, sometimes he doesn't. But the point is that he, he's keeping on going. He's moving forward step by step. And I think that we can all take that page out of Tom's experience and we can all move forward step by step and sometimes it feels like you're taking one step forward and two steps back. I, uh, I get that. But if you don't take that one step forward, then you're really not going to get anywhere. And it does take time to sort through. I think uh, Shira mentioned it as well. You know, at first glance, a lot of times we encounter things that really uh, aren't what we're after. And so we have to narrow our search and focus in a little bit more and maybe that uh, that website isn't the right website for us to uh, to be working with and we have to find another one that is that attracts more of the type of person that we're looking for um, so uh, you know good point and then the other point that Tom made and this is a critical critical point okay um, one of the things that uh, Denise Casino mentions about Twitter, Denise is the gal that runs her Amazon number one bestseller program, is that she says that when you're, when you're collecting followers on Twitter, what you do is you look at who is following a big name author, and then you follow those people. Okay, Chances if you follow Nora Roberts, uh, she's not going to follow you back. But if you're a romance novelist and you start looking at the people that are following Nora Roberts, those are the ones that will follow you. So looking for associations, looking for authors uh, in your writing style. You know, if, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I kind of look at uh, maybe one of my, one of my role models, and this is kind of sick at times. Uh, you know, uh, I grew up in the, you know, envying that beat generation that uh, that Jack Kerouac uh, wrote about and if I look at uh, if I look at how and what I write about that is that's it you know so if I can find other authors in that same style of uh, adventure renegade adventure as uh, you know, maybe that's the uh, title I should use for my blog, The Renegade Adventure. Uh, um, you know, then I'm going to find, I'm going to attract the people that, that, you know, I can influence. And so, you know, it does take some sorting around. And the other thing, uh, Tom, about the URLs, you can always add a new page to your website. And you can choose... Uh, you know, okay, uh, I'm going to add the page, uh, The Renegade Adventure. And uh, I can just add it, right? You know, Greg can help you, you know, connect it to your, uh, your existing website. And each page on that website can uh, leverage different keywords. So you can add, and I think that, I think that this is really an important component. Uh, 
uh, that many of us uh, do not grasp. Our websites need to be dynamic. So adding a URL page to an existing website is dynamic. What I mean by dynamic and why it's so important is that every time you make an addition like that, the Google search engine spider comes out and checks you out. Okay, so the more times it does that and it finds something of worth, the higher ranking everything uh, gets. And I thank you for the term renegade, Tom. I, uh, you know, if I look at what I wrote in the first 1,400 words of my new book, uh, the word renegade is missing. But the concept is running through almost every sentence of what I'm talking about. So, you know, again, you know, it's very difficult for us to see our nose in front of us. It really is. That's why, you know, a group like this really can help us, uh, you know, get clear and, uh, you know, talk about some of the uh, branding components that we don't quite grasp. So thanks uh, very much. Uh, anyone else got any topics uh, in, or comments on branding or kind of sorting through, uh, you know, how to get the, the good friends on social media and, you uh, not feel bad about defriending the bad ones. <laughs> well, gang, oh. you know, I, I yeah, I am. Um, I maybe I haven't had the trouble that others have. Um, what could someone just tell me what what trouble it is to have uh, followers that you didn't expect or don't particularly want? Um, what's, what's, a follower is, is a follower, are they not? What, what trouble can they cause? Honest question, I don't know. Well, you know, um, it, it's a good question. I think that, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, perhaps, uh, you know, I, I think maybe women have more of an issue at this at some, some point because there's stalkers out there. Uh, and uh, you can encounter something that can be, uh, you know, uh, create uh, uh, bad uh, energy in your life if you happen to be the wrong uh, type of person. But I think that what Ashira was really getting at is, is it productive to have friends that really aren't friends, friends that are just collecting numbers? And, uh, you know, and, and your question is... Uh, let me, ask, let, me ask, let me ask into that because um, I've been building uh, quite a friendship list on Facebook and uh, it's primarily people I don't know at all. My assumption though was that um, just through sheer numbers, the, the name of my book and my name would, would simply spread. Um, those people aren't going to be my personal friends, but their names. So. So I'm seeing it here. I understand that women are, uh, you know, want to be a little more protective, need to be, but still numbers are numbers and, uh, and we can't control the, uh, the character content necessarily. So I'm still in question. I have uh, an observation on that. It's like getting a qualifying your customer. If you advertise, uh, in the, in the local, uh, I don't know, a newspaper that sports fans read, and you're advertising lace pillowcases. It's, it doesn't make sense. So I think, as, as Denise Casino pointed out, when you're, especially when you look at Twitter, you get qualified followers. You want people following you that are interested in expanding their uh, uh, self knowledge expanding, make, making a fuller life. So I don't think, as Rama said, it's not necessarily um, bad. I get not, that. Yeah. So maybe not bad. As a sales guy, as a sales guy, I get that. If they cost you time, then you definitely don't want to, you, you know, you have to qualify customers. But um, quite honestly, I'm wondering if um, a thousand followers, uh, uh, of which to really interesting 
I'm talking about. Those people are going to have followers too. They're going to have the, the ricochet effect, the, um, uh, the six degrees of separation, the hundredth monkey, all of these terms that we bandy about, about the multiplication of numbers. Um, I wonder if it doesn't end up working in our favor to have a huge, huge bunch of people out there who one way or another are receiving, passing on um, whatever you happen to be sending out. I, I see, yes. That's a dilemma. I've, I left in some followers that seemed hostile because there's nothing like a good argument to attract attention. So <laughs> if they're hostile. Oh, yeah. You know, if, you're getting, if they're causing arguments, then dump them. Yeah. I, just so much of this is passive. They friend you and then you never hear from them again, but you hope that they, they get your post. So, so anyway, I've just, just had caused me trouble. So I was curious as to why other people were concerned. Well, you know, you can you can see the uh, logic of a salesman here. Okay, uh, uh, for those of you who don't know Tom Carroll, he is a salesman, and with sales, it is a numbers game. Okay, there's just no doubt about it. Always has been, and so I, I can see both sides of this uh, this uh, dilemma because uh, you know. Collecting numbers uh, may be a good thing, um, and in collecting those numbers, we might find that one person that uh, makes the difference. And we don't know where that person comes from or when we're going to encounter them. So you know, it's a you know, it is a a dilemma, and I think that you know maybe it goes through a a, a culling process where you collect them. And then you look through and you say, okay, this person acts, that person acts, this person acts. And then you keep on going through this, uh, you know, kind of thing. You know, I don't know if, uh, if any of you have been up on Facebook, but uh, um, I have friends that regularly have a post that says, I'm going to get, get rid of all my friends that don't communicate with me. And, uh, you know, and what... Uh, what that does is it uh, it causes uh, the people that don't want to be dumped uh, to communicate with that person. Uh, so it's kind of a, you know, maybe a gimmick uh, or maybe it's not. But there are, you know, ways that you can cull that, uh, that collection. I, I think that there are two components here. One is the collection and then one is sorting through and, uh, and saying no, no, yes, yes, no, no. And, uh, you know, then keeping on moving along, because I think that in some respects, uh, Tom Carroll, you're right that you want to continue to collect them. And I think on uh, the other hand, Ashir is right in that, hey, look, if they're not going to be productive, then ax them. Uh, so I think it's a it's a two sided uh, uh, coin here and that we still go through this process of collection. Uh, but. We do it with discernment. I think that we have to do that in our life as well. So I, I think that uh, you know, um, I, I think that it's uh, it's a valid on both sides of this uh, this uh, uh, equation. So something that we yeah. all have to deal with. don't uh, from to share. I don't want to uh, don't want to seem like I was arguing with you. I was just genuinely curious as to how they'd possibly cause trouble. So thanks for the input there. I'll be considering it. Well, I can respond um, to it, which is, you know, first of all, if you want to ask a question, I wish you would just ask it instead of asking it and then immediately giving your perspective because that did feel like an argument. And that's why I'm responding now because you just said you weren't arguing with me. So thank you for saying that. But if anybody would just look at my Twitter account, you'll see what I'm, what, what is being said, what I'm talking about. You know, and uh, it's definitely not, it's, it's, a, it's a huge thing. I got a lot of, of followers and I already said, I mean, they're misogynist and they're certainly not going to buy my stuff and they're not promoting my stuff and they're not going to retweet anything that I do. Nobody's favoriting my tweets, which is what you do. That's the like of Twitter, you know, and it's pretty, it's a pretty disgusting world. If you just, you know, I don't want to see pictures of, Mouths taped shut. I don't want that to be the profile picture of somebody following me. It's disgusting. And thank you, Rama, for saying that women have more of a problem with this. Yes, it's a huge problem. And it's, 
You know, there's a lot of disgusting stuff out in the world, and I'm done now. <laughs> well, you know, uh, it, it you know it makes you wonder how effective social media is. And even though, um, you know, we do recommend that authors set up, you know, a, a number of different uh, social media accounts, what I've noticed is that each author seems to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, vibrate with one or two of them. And so in your case, uh, Twitter might not not be an effective uh, component for you. I know when I tried to do uh, Twitter, I, you know, I came back with the obvious question, what the, you know, what the heck, you know, this isn't helping me at all. Um, so I, uh, you know, I, as far as the social media, Twitter doesn't seem to, you know, uh, radiate with me, but I seem to like Facebook. Uh, um, and it might be because our Sedona community is such a, you know, a wonderfully enlightened community and everyone is evolving and, you know, spiritual and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, I, I have some old time friends uh, and I have some new time friends and some people I know and some people I don't. And, uh, you know, I don't know if, uh, if ultimately uh, I sell books. Uh, I don't do much promotion through that. Uh, um, so, you know, it may be that we, ne we need to set up a more specific presence okay our personal pres presence uh uh is one thing but then we you know kind of uh categorize a business presence like uh the promote your book now website for our, our facebook page for example you know is really you know authors okay there aren't people uh you know my normal friends uh you know haven't checked out that uh that page but the authors do so uh you know that might be an approach as well is to to look at a both a personal page and a fan business uh genre based page for all that social media and at this point in time i generally post more on my promote your book now uh facebook page than i do on my personal page uh, so to me that one has seemed to you know uh be more of interest to me and to the the people that I'm communicating with. So uh, you know, I, I really think that this is a a huge huge topic for all of us. Uh, you know, and it goes well beyond just uh, you know what we've talked about here. I really think that uh, you know uh, there are you know other uh, components that we all need to sort out in order to in order to make social media productive resource for us, whatever it is we're doing. And I, and I really am thankful uh, Shira, that you brought up this topic because you opened up the, uh, you know, the Pandora's box. I mean, you, uh, you questioned the system. And I think that that's, that's hugely valid for all of us is to, to question and to look. And I think that, uh, you know, if we, uh, you know, if we look at the faces, and I and I see a familiar face here, who is a Twitter, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, I don't know if I'd call him a Twitter expert, but he's leveraged Twitter quite well. Uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna call him on the cuff here a little bit, uh, and he's smiling already. Now. <laughs> so Curtis, uh, you know, uh, what is your experience? I mean, you are a controversial uh, topic in your Twitter posts, and. Uh, you know, what kind of uh, encounters have you had uh, uh, with it? And what, you know, what do you view about the productiveness of it? Um, it's interesting, I think, with Twitter. And, and I prefer Twitter to Facebook. Uh, I'm, I'm actually getting involved a little bit with Google Plus uh, over the last couple of weeks. I haven't really figured that out yet. But as far as, as Twitter goes, um, you, you get a lot of instant feedback, um, which, which is helpful. Um, I've, I've, I've gained some, some good followers and some good connections through it. Uh, in fact, uh, just the last, uh, about a couple weeks ago, um, through uh, a, a Twitter uh, follower, I ended up uh, getting uh, asked 
to contribute to a, a new website. So uh, I knew for me, it's been around for a few years, but uh, uh, contribute as a writer to, to that website. So um, I've found it to be quite useful. It's, it's, it doesn't have quite the power that I'd like it to have, but I think of the, of the various social media uh, platforms, that's worked best for me. You know, uh, thanks, uh, Curtis. I see that uh, Deborah Lightheart has made a, a, a real interesting comment. And in many studies, uh, I've, I've read that Twitter is the most effective uh, of the social media for selling books. I mean, I personally haven't sold any books from Twitter, but I haven't used Twitter, so I can't say uh, one way or the other. Uh, personal experience uh, uh, but you know uh, Deborah you're right I mean uh, I've I've looked at studies that have uh, identified this and I think that you know it really goes back to our branding component is you know if we zero in on something uh, that uh, we're going to focus on in any of our social media then I, I think that we can be more uh, effective at getting, uh, you know, let's just say good followers as opposed to uh, spammers mm -hmm. uh, or useless followers. Uh, uh, but the bottom line is you never know uh, that one person that looks like he's uh, or she's uh, not going to be helpful could be the one that happened to talk about you to a friend of theirs. And the next thing you know, uh, you've got an interview on a website or, uh, you know, something breaks for you. So, you know, it goes back to, yes, there's a numbers game. Uh, uh, yes, there's probably a, a way to pinpoint a little high, you know, clearer focus on what we're after. And those components really go into what we started our conversation with, which is author branding. You know, what is our identity or what do we want our identity to be? Because as I said, you know, we're all authors and so we can make up an identity if that's, you know, what we feel, uh, you know, we want to pursue. So, uh, you know, some good, uh, good topics here. Uh, does anyone else have any ideas for upcoming webinars that they'd like to share? Because um, it would be good to have a... Uh, a number of uh, ideas in the till. Uh, we will go to the, uh, the um, what was it? It was the book trailer and YouTube, because I think that, uh, you know, talking about YouTube on a regular basis is really important for all of us to realize. For those of you who haven't heard me say this, YouTube is the number two search engine out there, gang. So we want to have a presence of sorts on there and uh you know a book trailer is a great way to start uh um you know so uh we can all uh we can all do that from the very computer we're using uh here except for the people that i don't see pictures on uh, uh you probably you may not have a camera but um you know it's a very simple process and what i'll do is i'll uh, i'll uh, bring up uh, sally rose's one and once you see that, uh, you'll say, oh, my gosh, I can do that, and, uh, and all. Uh, any other questions or comments? Because I'm going to, uh, you know, uh, cut things short today if we don't have anyone uh, that wants to, uh, to talk. Hey, I have a burning question here, and it really comes down to it's a bottom line question. I've been eligible for a... A, uh, a commission, that's not a commission check, a check from CreateSpace for, uh, for books sold uh, all the way back in December, and I've yet to receive a check in the mail. How have the rest of you been doing as far as getting payments? Uh, Tom, uh, a lot of times, uh, um, and I know that this is, uh, this is something that some of the other companies have done, is that they will not cut the check until you hit a hundred dollars. Uh, so well, that's that, what I say. that they, um, you know, this may not apply to everyone, but uh, that I'd hit that back in November, December, and it's just lagging. I was just one.
wondering if we needed to uh, poke them somehow. Uh, you could certainly, uh, you know, communicate with them. From my understanding is that they are very communicative. Uh, so, you know, you can, uh, you know, some authors, I think uh, uh, Bonnie and uh, Leland had spoken with them a few times uh, trying to sort through our issues with the picture books. And I think that they, uh, you know, they got people online, uh, both uh, on the phone and maybe through emails to respond. Uh, Leland, do you want to just comment on that real quick? Hold on. Let me unmute you. Hold on a second. Okay, go. Yes, well, we get a different person each time we do get a human being, and the human being does know what's going on and is quite um, cooperative. So, uh, yeah, Tom. Yeah, I had good luck talking with them. They're always very friendly. Um, I'm gathering this has not been a problem for others, and I just I wondered if someone else had been wondering where the check was. Well, I know uh, that at the end of the year, uh, I think uh, Bill Murphy mentioned this also, uh, uh, Bill and I both got checks from Kindle and from uh, from Create Space, I think. Uh, um, I don't think either of ours were very big, but it was something. And so, uh, you know, um, I, I don't really know what the system uh, is, Tom. Okay, just thought I'd throw it out, thanks. Well, you know, uh, you know, Deborah has mentioned again uh, about Denise and uh, and Twitter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, get Denise back on talking about Twitter for us. Uh, you know, uh, periodically, I think that uh, you know her insights uh, are very helpful and she's very motivational for us. You know, she has a huge Twitter following and does utilize that. Uh, uh, in the Amazon book launches that she does uh, for our authors uh, just to, uh, you know, show how effective uh, she's been. Uh, um, you know, the last three authors that she did launch uh, did become number ones. Uh, uh, Catherine Carrigan, I think, was uh, right at the beginning of the year or at the end of uh, last year. I can't remember. Linda LaFlamme, uh, uh, was on Martin Luther King Day on the 19th, and then uh, Nancy Perry was on, uh, you know, a couple of days later. And I heard a comment from Nancy Perry, and I, and I really want to uh, uh, drive this one home for all of us, okay? Nancy Perry became a number one bestseller, and her comment was, well, it didn't do anything for me. And this has always been one of our big concerns with uh, you know uh, the Amazon program and that's why we have a bigger promotion package set up around that as a cornerstone okay if we do not have a digital marketing component in place and we do not do any marketing through Twitter Facebook uh, YouTube Pinterest Instagram I mean whole host of different things, then becoming an Amazon uh, bestseller is not going to really uh, do anything for us other than give us this wonderful feather in our cap. Okay. Um, now, I will have more insight into this process, uh, you know, uh, as I get more involved with it and actually do the launch. But, you know, when I tell the authors about this program, I really – tell them that, hey, this is more of a feather in your cap and a stepping stone than it is a guarantee of number of sales, okay? But a stepping stone is only good if we're going to step. You know, if we're going to sit back and do nothing with it, uh, then, you know, we have to accept the consequences. And I think it goes back to what I encountered when I originally took over this position. Um, and we've come a long ways, and all of our authors are much more engaged than that than they were uh, when I first took over. Uh, um, you know, I thought that there was a strong belief that you could write a book, put up a website, and step back and not do anything. 
and you would sell tons of books. Well, you know, the only ones that have been successful are the ones that have stepped forward. And I think uh, Curtis is, uh, is one of those from the early days. You know, he, uh, he realized that he had to do something. And he's, uh, he's created such a, uh, you know, a shift in his career that he's had to adjust some of the things that he's done. Uh, you know, with his time. And, you know, uh, you, uh, when I talk to Curtis, you know, he's really happy about what he's doing. He may not be selling tons of books, but he, what he's done is he's created a brand. He's created an identity. And I truly believe that if you go and take those steps like Curtis has done, eventually you're going to hit that hundredth monkey. You're going to hit that point where things start to take off on their own. And uh, you can't do that by sitting back and just not doing anything. And at first, uh, it seems like you're doing it just for yourself. I've heard that over and over again. You know, a friend, uh, I think it was Sally Rose, uh, said she uh, did her first newsletter and she said, oh, it's really easy to do. And uh, the conversations prior to that, were, I sent it out to all two people on my mailing list. <laughs> <laughs> but point is that it's out there now. And sometimes things have legs on their own. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about those legs in upcoming webinars. I'm going to go back to, uh, to my... Uh, keyword uh, uh, talk because I think that that's a critical component of branding and everything that we do and I just did download a a keyword search thing of course it's got a file extension that I've never seen before AIR so I have to figure out how to open the darn thing uh, you know fortunately we have Google out there and uh, I'm gonna end this uh, this webinar with this. If you have any questions about how to use social media, how to develop an author brand, how to uh, uh, set up a fan page, go to Google and type in those terms and they will provide you with a step-by-step -step component okay so everybody uh, your assignment uh, if you choose to take action is to send me some information on your author brand whether it's a URL whether it's a catchy phrase whether it's a name that you want to uh, be identified uh, with send it to me let's get these out let's get some action um, and if it's something that you haven't gotten a URL on, it is time to purchase those URLs. They cost virtually nothing if they are available. And I cannot tell you how important uh, it can be as you set up your brand, your website, your social media components and get that book out there. And uh, one of the things that we encounter on a regular basis is books with the same title. Um, normally, uh, that is an acceptable approach uh, as long as you have a secondary title that distinguishes your book from someone else's. So don't be discouraged if that great title is, uh, is uh, utilized. Um, you may be able to still utilize them. Most people never copyright the title of a book and I'm not sure uh, how you would go about doing that uh, you can copyright a book but you may not be able to copyright the title of it. Um, any other comments before I tune out and go to the beach <laughs> yeah, uh, Rama, yes <laughs> just one last thing is the uh, getting to be an author uh, best-selling author on Amazon that process is also an education, and I'll bet you, right here, after you do it, you'll be a fan of Twitter. <laughs> you <laughs> that's know, all, that's, it's, it's the education. Uh, that's a, that's a, a, a great, uh, you know, addition, uh, uh, Tom, uh, because Denise is 
a uh, you know a Twitter specialist. She teaches us uh, in that process how to use Twitter more effectively. And one of the components that she uses <laughs> is pictures. So uh, in this case, uh, pictures worth a thousand words, gang. Even though we're good at writing those thousand words, uh, only a few of us are good at creating pictures. So we have to rely on what's out there. And um, there's a lot of copyright free stuff out there. Um, you know, uh, Kiera uh, did mention about copyright, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do uh, a webinar on copyright information because I think that none of us really know uh, what that's all about, and uh, you know whether uh, you know uh, our titles are copywritten or not. Um, I have seen a number of books with the same title out there in different uh, secondary titles. And I've often wondered, I've never, uh, or I've rarely seen a book that has a title with that copyright mark by the title. So, um, you know, good question. Uh, I'll put that on the docket to, uh, to learn more about, because I think, uh, you know, trademark and copyright stuff is really uh, uh, a good, uh, good topic for us to all learn about. Okay, everybody, um, I'm going to uh, tune out today. I will be back uh, next week at the same time. And uh, I'm running out of uh, webinars from Hawaii. Let me look at my calendar real quick. Uh, next Saturday will be my last uh, webinar from Hawaii. After that, uh, um, nope, two more from Hawaii. No, oh, no, one more from Hawaii, and then I'll be back in uh, in uh, Arizona. Uh, so one more webinar here from Hawaii, and then uh, back to Arizona on the 14th of uh, Valentine's Day. Catherine Carrigan is going to speak again about her uh, her uh, just released book and probably uh, reworking her uh, her first book that uh, she did uh, prior to uh, meeting us. And uh, I think that's a good story in itself. So uh, uh, beyond that, anyone that wants to do another author interview, uh, Curtis, it's about time we put you up again since you're such sure. a big uh, role model for us and they have so much more insight than, uh, than many of us uh, out there. Uh, you know, uh, Dennis, uh, it'd be good to talk with you again. Uh, Leland, uh, we have to do a, uh, a webinar, uh, so uh, when I get back, we'll talk about that. You know, um, whoever else uh, wants to do uh, things. Uh, James Parker, uh, where's that copy, uh, copy edit? Uh, see, the problem about writing a really long book is that you've got a lot of book, uh, a lot of book to go through. Uh, <laughs> I was talking to, uh, to somebody, uh, the other day, and he he just finished up an eighty thousand word book, and I said, comment to him, oh, I'm never going to write anything that long, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thirty thousand words is plenty for me. <laughs> Got to read it so much and go through it. Uh, holy cow! So uh, you know, I uh, I marvel at all of you uh, uh, authors out there, and you know, uh, you're all great great writers and. Get that first book done so that you can have a different level of competence for book two. As I said, uh, book two is easier in many ways and harder in other ways. It's just, you know, they don't just pop out. Um, but having that level of competence of having one book uh, published really goes a long way. It's like having those sea legs. And... Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, for those of you who are struggling, uh, Kiara, that first draft should be done pretty soon. Um, and who else do we have here? Carol, uh, I know you're working on yours. Amy Dean, you should have uh, gotten your book uh, to us one of these days. Uh, but, you know, I am as bad, if not worse, than all of you. Uh, so, uh, you know... I'm not, uh, I'm by no sense of the word a role model. I've been thinking about book two for a couple of years. And 
the topic of book two was the first thing that I wrote in my first Tom Bird's uh, retreat. That was over three and a half years ago. Uh, so, you know, it takes time to get this done. Uh, um, and just, uh, just know that uh, all the books have a life of their own. They come out in their own time. And it just is taking those steps forward every little bit at a time. Everybody, have yourself a great weekend. I'll be back next week. I think we'll, uh, we'll talk about uh, uh, book trailers and YouTube. Thank you, Tom Pitts, for that great, uh, great topic. Everybody, have yourself a great weekend. And enjoy uh, the sun in Arizona and Florida. I don't know if Atlanta's sunny. Uh, um, back in, uh, in Maryland, I don't know if you guys got a good snowstorm there, Ashira. Um, Santa Fe, you know, we've got a great group of people. I love you all. Take care. I'll be back next week. Thank you. Bye, Salama. Thank Bye, you. Bye, Ron.